Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight and neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the blessed one the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take few minutes for ourselves to be very clear with this practice. So especially when it comes to meditation, there are many kind of meditation techniques nowadays we can see. But out of this whole meditation technique, so one of the very purpose we have, having that inner clarity. So that inner clarity means that developing your awareness. So without developing your awareness, without addressing to your awareness or the recognition or the your consciousness, there is no way that you can develop any kind of life. Maybe materially we can become very successful. That, and at the same time, through the science and technology, we may feel so comfortable and safe. But if you look very carefully, this whole science and machines, technology, everything, help us to have a, some kind of comfortable life. But it doesn't mean it helps us to, to grow. It will help us to maintain. So the very growth happens out of your inner development. So that inner development means awareness. So when it comes to awareness, why it is very important today and why we have to practice. Because our ordinary life, most of time, depend on a lot of other things and because of that, we lose awareness. Every day, we into a lot of things and we depend from other things. And when we depending from other things, we start to trust that. So you trusting the something means you lose your awareness. So that's why you have to develop a method to look into you and see the very nature and the condition of your mind and develop your awareness rather than losing it. It is a great challenge for now, all of us. Because there are very few facilities that we have to develop that. And the most of time, it, the, the, this outside world organize and try to push ourselves to be not aware about ourselves. 
and it always try to help us to be unconscious rather than become conscious. And at the same time, sometimes ourselves also, when we become happy, when we become unhappy, we choose to be unconscious. So that, that became our very new normal. So then yourself, you have to remember. Even in a happy moment, if you decide to be unconscious, you have no idea about what is happiness. And even in the very sad moments, difficult moment, if you, if you choose to be unconscious, you have no idea about life. Because without understanding the, the very nature of life, you can't go beyond this. Then you start to get tangled again and again and again with the, the life. So then being conscious is your very responsibility. And to be conscious, even you can't use the some kind of our own inner thoughts. Because that thoughts also manipulated by certain ideas, visions, the patterns, methods, believing system, following system. So like that. So then if you bring that same kind of thoughts, to be aware, then you get, then again, you miss the point. So that's why developing satipatthana, developing your mindfulness, developing your awareness is important. And for that, you have to follow the right information. So then how you can get into the right mindfulness and start to tune to the present moment without using thoughts? So then you have to get a very primary mental object, not biased to believing of the following system. So that is why we take breathing or the inhalation, exhalation as our primary mental object. So you can observe it in front of your nose and your upper lip area without interfering to it without making any comments, without making any disturb to that natural process, just observe. If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. So develop the flow, so the grow your flow. So that is one thing when you start to practice. So one thing, so remember the very first thing, allow your body to settle down. And if you can, have a un very unmovable posture. Even 5 minutes, 10 minutes, that's enough. You take a very conscious decision not to move your body, but to, to keep following the breathing. And that breathing doesn't mean you create it, you maintain it, you think and do. No, you release that everything from it and start to observe. And when you observe that way, you start to recognize beyond your thoughts, there is something happens. That is what you need to catch. That is what you need to experience. Beyond what you think, there is something happens. So, sometimes in life, you have to have the ability to, to go beyond the words to understand certain things. So when it comes to our liberation or the transformation or the enlightenment, one of the ability you gain, you start to gain ability to understand beyond your thoughts. So that is why you're not going to become very limited thoughts. And sometimes that what you experience may not going to transform towards because if you if you try to transform or it bring it to words, then it becomes something different. So somehow develop the flow inside in the beginning, following the inhalation, exhalation. Don't try to, to interfere with the thoughts. 
So that is where you empower and increase, develop the power of observation. You don't interfere with thoughts. You don't try to think and understand what you experience, but you, your moment of experience itself become your wisdom. And develop the flow. And in that very level, it's kind of like you start to, to see your mind, your heart, your very being itself open to this moment of experience. Because as human beings, even though we like this word open, most of us inside very close. We like to learn a lot of things. We like to learn the Dharma. You know, we like to hear whatever the wise people told. We like to see how the rishis, uh, all the yogis and all the ancient wisdom happen. But still, sometimes we don't see, we close with our own self-centered ideas, thoughts. So bringing that openness to yourself is not easy. But without having that openness, you can't grow. So don't afraid to open. And that openness come out of you when you have the ability, when you have the desire, when you have the intention of change. Because without that, you're not going to be fully open. You become more and more and more close. You just go with these collective ideas. You're not going to grow out of that. So keep that willing to change. So you have to see that behind your practice. Are you willing to change? You give a little space for you. Just try a little bit. And allow yourself to change. Even while you practice. In the moment. Rather than interfering with thoughts. Allow, allow yourself to change. So then you will see. Beyond this all your thinking pattern. There is something. It's kind of like when, when you knock the door. Somebody come and open the door. So opening the door. Allow you to enter. But that entering itself have kind of like an intention, whoever behind the door. And that person allow you to come in. That's why the, it, you can go in. So same like behind your all this practice, there is kind of like a deeper intention in you. You have to look into that and see. And that is where you can grow and that is where you can be more and more and more open and into practice. We all see on the surface level, we all see, oh, I like to learn. I like to know. But we don't like to change. If you look at from us to all our human history, what we see, we can see people not change, things not change. Sometimes when the you know hard things, difficult things, bad things happen to us, we think we decide, I'm going to change. We think, oh, people will change. But it's not like that. There is a deeper current inside us. Again, we go back to go back to that our inner behavior, inner nature. Look at when the COVID situation happens. You know, when, when the entire world go through hard time, everybody thought, oh, this is a you know beautiful lesson for entire humanity to understand the value of life and uh, to appreciate each other, take care of each other. But look what happened before even it 
enters this entire COVID situation. What happened to the world? They get back and it became more kind of like aggressive. You know, people became more aggressive than before the COVID. And they came back with kind of like a go and get a, you know, nature. It's kind of like a hunt together nature. They start to awake again. So where that the people had the, that the, all the, you know, the nice, you know, humble thoughts about the entire world or the humanity. You know that uh, we think that few days, you know, that the whole this sky also used to be very clean and nice and the environment and even the through the cities, you know, this wild animal in some, yeah, some cities, you know, this wild animal came to city, you know, and the, the people start to appreciate each other because they couldn't be each other together sometimes. But look down, you know, where we are now again. We're back to our own same routine. And it start the war and start to killing. And here and there, people fight even, you know, just when you drive, you know, when you stop next, next to traffic light and sometimes. People more aggressive when you go to mall. Sometimes people so aggressive than before the COVID. And they forget that lesson. This is what happened deeper inside of our, our spiritual practice. So remember yourself what we see this outside. That it, it is our inner nature. That's what you have to understand. And sometimes you think, you see, you yourself, you think, oh, I'm good. Oh, I am so compassionate. Oh, I am so humble. Oh, I am more calm now. So kind of like we think. But you have to be very careful and you have to be sharp. That all good, but how about your awareness? How about your recognition? How, how, how far you can go deeper into you? Do you know from where this all come? Does, do, you, do you know that your boiling nature inside is what and what asking? The thing is this. I give an example. Like, uh, you know, this... Uh, when, when this Olympic happened, sometimes this 100 meters you know, race... And few people run and then it's very tight, you know, finish line. And people finish the very tight, you know, and it is very difficult to recognize who is the winner. It look like everybody passed the line to get kind of like, a, you know, so everybody, maybe some people think, oh, I am the winner. So that's mean you think you are there, but you are not there. Remember that. When you come to tranquility state, that is one thing you have to remember each and every moment again and again. Maybe you think you are there, but be careful. Maybe you are not there. Maybe you think, oh, I am the winner, but you are not the winner, somebody else. So how this mind come to that level? How that mind come to live? Oh, that's why, you know, as a husband, wife, parent, children, friends and families, even ourselves, we think, oh, I, I do myself. I do oh, everything for others. I am so generous. I am so humble. You know, it's like that. I do oh, my part. So like that we think. We think already I am there. But no. So that's why you, know, you need to observe again and again and again. And then recognize yourself. There are some blind spots we don't see. So that's why you have to practice because out of practice what happens, you clean these blind spots. So in that way, you are the one who become very clear with your own vision, your own recognition. 
And once you have that clarity, you are the one who know that what you experience is real. Because no any mental manipulation, no any hidden, hidden agenda within your own inner consciousness. That is Deepika. But you can develop it step by step, step by step. How you can come to that? So the very first principle, identification. Remember, always be very clear with the identification. You can use it to your spiritual development or your personal development. Somehow out of this all, you, are, you can use this information to gain your self-development. So the very first thing is identification. Recognize, take time, use all the methods, the patterns to, to recognize what you really want or what is happening inside you or why it happened like that. Be very clear before you move. Before you take step, develop this identification quality and have the clarity. Because identification gives the clarity. So that will take you to creativity. So the creativity here means when you have the very clear understanding within yourself, when you practice you're not going to become a bias to your own techniques or the methods or the pattern. You become independent. You become free from all the teachings, methods, patterns, believing system or the following system. So that, that is where your creativity comes. So the, that creativity means you have very clear open mind. You need that. Otherwise, you can't move forward. Otherwise, you, you can't grow. So it is, forget about the spiritual development. Even in the society, you can't do that. So it, it, it always needs to be there if you look for the growth or the development. So then keep that. And allow yourself to open to the the creativity, not the repetition. So look at as example. Look, the tea, milk, and the hot water. These all three things come together. And you add a little bit sugar if you like. Or maybe you can have a cookie next to it if you like. And it creates a perfect tea. So that, that is the, the creativity. You have ability to bring different things together and put it. And when you put that all, you have to know the right amount. Otherwise, you can't do that. So for that, you have to be conscious. So then when it comes to meditation, Observing, taking the posture, recognizing, understanding the inhalation, exhalation. So this all together, you come to experience with the very independent, clear mind. So that is where you open the creativity. Oh, that means you open to understand. And it is not you look for something outside and take it to you. No, now you, it, it's come from you. That is where your growth happens. So creativity. And then the next one is organizing. So that organizing means it's not when, when that happened for a one time, you can't just let go it. You have, to have, you have to organize it again and again and again and arrange it and keeping it with you. And sometimes when the mind go here and there, you have to bring it back. 
when the different kind of thoughts come, you have to bring it back. Sometimes your mind say, oh, this taking enough uh, observing inhalation, exhalation, I'm so tired about. You have to keep, keep going, keep going. So in that way, you, you have ability to organize your own mind, your own head. That is the winning point because we, we are so smart to organize outside things. We are so smart to organize the house, the, the buildings, the structures, the nature, you know, environment, parking. So this is really well organized. But when it comes to human head, it is a mess. But if you have ability to organize it, so that is what your primary mental object does. It gives you ability to organize yourself. See how deep it is? Because if you have that, these outside things, because sometimes these outside things, you know, it has its own way to organize. Look at with the with the rain, the wind, the, you know, the heat. It has a way. Kind of like uh, how to organize that. But our responsibilities within this time period, can you come to organize yourself and knowingly what is major and what is minor? So primary mental object allow you to, to organize your thought and your posture will allow you to organize your moment and as a result of that, you deeply organize your awareness. So when the, the awareness is there, awareness is there, it is everywhere. So that's the thing. So organizing means what? You bring your entire awareness to one place. That is where it becomes sharp, clear, powerful. So whatever the situation, that, that's why that you have to have the ability to, to bring it to the right place. So when you have a busy mind, you know, don't think it is uh, kind of like bad. No, only thing is you recognize, bring it. And the most of time people's life become mess because they have no ability to organize themselves. And then they resist. They think this is bad, this is wrong. So that's why this is anything is not bad. Remember this charcoal, by the time, after million, million years, when it go through deeper pressure underneath this earth, it transformed to diamond. So it is not bad, it is a journey. The process go through something and transform. So then yourself, it is your responsibility to look and see. So whatever situation, can you transform it to a more better, more higher thing? So that's why you have to develop this skill of organizing inside you with the primary mental object. Another one is the, the sharing, contribution. So how? you can share your life with others. It is because when it comes to meditation, remember, your spiritual development doesn't mean it is only for you. No, out of you, when you change, that change should bring some benefit for other people, other living beings to this universe. Your transformation should help for others and that is where that your, your practice, your life become very meaningful. It is just not only for you. So enlightenment means, liberation means, it is just not only you go yourself very longly, longly journey. Your liberation means you give opportunity for other people to experience their life also in a more higher level. 
So it come out of how you share your life rather than becoming more close yourself. So then you have to look in and you, you know, you have to do help in many, many ways. You, there are many ways that you can help for others, do something for others. It, it, so you have to keep it as a part of your life. It's not only 24-7 thinking about me, 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 me. You know, sometimes this is spiritual path. Some people practice yoga, meditation. And rather than they becoming very open, sometimes they become very close. They have more egocentric, self-centered mind. They think about their, their liberation, only their liberation. They think about their only their salvation. They think about only their Nibbana. There is no such a thing like that. That's why when you open your heart, you start, it's kind of like you open your life for others. And there are many ways that you can help other people and other things. So once you understand that, that connection itself, it's kind of like giving you wisdom for yourself. And you, you become more humble a little bit. You know, you, you give some space, some time for others. You know, and you start to listen a little bit. And you share at the right time, in the right way. So that gives you opportunity to grow. So that's why this spiritual practice doesn't mean it is just only for you. So it is a part of this, the process of this entire universe. So then when you transform, that means it is just not only you. It helps you to, to transform the entire humanity. So that's why I think it's step by step, whatever the progress that you gain, it is just not only your progress. It's become a progress to this entire humanity. And when they, they come for you to transform yourself and it come to liberation yourself, it is just not only your liberation. It gives opportunity to this entire humanity to to uplift their life also. So when you start to look like that, when you start to understand it like that, you feel so comfortable about it. You feel so relaxed and you feel so vulnerable. You feel so happy. You have the joy to walk in this path yourself. And that is where when the very deep, difficult, hard situations come, you already have the strength, courage, wisdom to go through that rather than escape. So otherwise, if you think it is only me, I have to attain to enlightenment or oh, Nibbana, I hate this world, I want to attain him. It's your personal life. When situations come, you collapse. Why? Because you have no strength to, to go through situations. When you become self-centered, remember, when you become self-centered, you, you become very limited to your skin. You become very weak. But if you start to open your heart, mind, and you become like this universe, because there is no limit. So that, that openness bring it to you. That openness allow it to grow. And so that way, because that, that openness, if you develop in your heart, it becomes art for you to grow. So don't close it. Don't push it down. Just imagine when you have something in your hand, in both hands, okay, like this, you can open it in two ways. Okay? So like, if you open it this way, it go down. And if you open this way, you know, still you can hold. But 
it is belong to this unlimited sky. So that's why when you become self-centered and thinking about me, 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 I am, it's kind of like you opening only for you. It has no strength. So don't, don't develop that path. So open to the unlimited universe. And then you feel more comfortable. And that is why you have the thrust to walk in this path when even you close your eyes, you cross your legs and your hands together. No movements, but still you feel so comfortable to, to go deeper, deeper, deeper into this unknown mind or the self and recognize what is behind this all. What is behind your thoughts? What is behind your words? But what is behind your actions? What is behind your skin? And once the day you recognize that, you're not going to be very limited to your words, your own actions, your own skin. And that freedom is available for you. But always remember, only one thing holds this all, that is your awareness. So little by little, little by little, get into that. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. And your right palm on your left and neck, get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself. And say Swapateva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting. May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation please. And allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. When it happens through the sensation, recognize it. Do nothing extra.
Bring attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, and around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. To your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha mihi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodam tu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe bhuta numodam tu sabba sampatti siddhya sabbe satta numodam tu sabba sampatti siddhya Nimaya dhamma nu dhamma patipatiya buddham pujemi dhammam pujemi sangham pujemi Adhaya imaya patipatiya jati jaravya adi maranam ha paribunji sami Idam me punya kamang asavakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka apamunjatu Bless you.